Hi guys, it's Eric with the Film Photography Channel, and today we're looking at the Olympus OM2N. Now this camera, um, just to give you a little background on the Olympus OM bodies and uh, the OM series of, of cameras, um, the first, the very first model that Olympus came out with of this, uh, when they all pretty much looked the same in terms of the the you know, the pentaprism, the shape of the pentaprism, and the size of the body, they're all very similar. You really have to look at the badge to see which, which one you're actually holding. Um, but they, they started off the line with what they called the Olympus M1, uh, which didn't go over too well with Leica. There was a little legal dispute there, so Leica didn't like that M, you know, that M nomenclature, so uh, they quickly changed the M1 to the OM1. The OM1 was your basic camera. Uh, it was a, a manual-only exposure. Uh, it did, of course, have an exposure meter. These cameras, uh, they started, re they were released in uh, 1972, so they were kind of modern era, if you will, of the film camera. Um, yeah, they came out with the OM2, and uh, then, which gave you automated uh, or aperture priority exposure, and the OM2N would uh, give you the a longer shutter speed under the automatic mode, okay? Because if you look at the shutter speed dial, which is brilliantly placed right here around you know at the base of the lens this is your actually your shutter speed dial it's a really good place for it you got shutter speed here aperture right here but yeah if you look at the shutter speed dial it only it goes down to, to one second but if you're using it in the automated mode let's see if we can replicate it you see the the shutter just opened up there and it's TTL so as soon as I expose it to light it's, it's constantly reading um, so as soon as I show it some some uh, some light, you see the shutters open now, and like you know, like most TTL cameras uh, will do this. As soon as I show it some light, it, it'll it'll compensate and it'll shut the lens, uh, shut everything down. Um, okay, so like I said, this is aperture preferred or aperture priority camera. You got exposure compensation up top here, nice clicky knobs. It's plus or minus two stops. You pull up on it to set your ASA. Uh, there's a little window right there uh, that shows uh, right now we're in ASA 400. Um, the uh, shutter release is here. Film advance is nice, nice smooth film advance there. Um, this is your your uh, on-off switch. Now one kind of uh, bummer about this camera that I didn't really realize it was if you leave this thing on, I don't think it ever really shuts down. It kind of kills your battery if you leave it in the on. Uh, I think that's true. Um, so what you have up top here is you got uh, auto setting off and manual. When you when you flip this switch, the neatest thing happens inside the viewfinder. You'll see uh, in the auto mode you, you'll see uh, uh, your shutter speed scale, um, and it shows uh, really shows from one to one one thousandth um, of a second. And there's a needle to show you where you are in your shutter speed. When you flip it past the off position into manual, that shutter speed dial or shutter speed indicator slides out of the way, and then you've got just a plus and minus with the needle still there, uh, you know, showing you uh, where you are in your manual exposure. So it's it's kind of cool the way that thing slides out of the way. And uh, speaking of the viewfinder, the viewfinder in this thing is huge. I liken the viewfinder in this camera. It's probably bigger than on my uh, G9 that I'm recording this with. The, and the G9 is, is you know, getting a lot of uh, press for having this big, beautiful viewfinder. But yeah, this uh, this uh, viewfinder on this camera is huge, and it was that was one of the uh, uh, one of the selling points. It had this huge viewfinder. Um, it had it's it's a small camera, so it's, they they were kind of like trying to give you a good compromise between a um, a rangefinder, which rangefinder cameras are typically a lot smaller, and then your big bulky um, system cameras, like your Nikon F series and your Canon A ones, you know, and those big cameras. If you compare this camera, the Olympus OM2N, uh, to this guy here, a Nikon F3, which I absolutely love. I actually love both of these cameras, but yeah, you can see right away the you know the difference in size. The lenses for for this. Uh, OM system 
were, first of all, phenomenal optics. They're every bit as good as anything Nikon's ever made. Super smooth, uh, you know, focus rings. Most of them had the aperture rings uh, on the front. Okay, nice clicky aperture rings. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the, the camera bodies, they all had the, the shutter speed right here at the base of the lens. Um, depth of field preview is down here at the bottom. Um, lens removal button is right up there. But yeah, going back to the to the lenses, this this is a hundred millimeter lens right here. Okay, if you can see that, it's not, and that's a that's a at its closest focusing there. Hundred millimeter lens. I mean, the, this thing will literally fit in the palm of your hand. Um, I'll show you another more typical, and that's a nice portrait lens too. By the way, that hundred mil. All these lenses are are super sharp. Uh, very nice to use. Uh, really nice action. Um, this is a 24 millimeter f2.8, and, and even with the lens hood, look how tiny this thing is. Okay, and it had a screw-on lens hood, which, which is a little old school, but here, there it is, tiny little lens. And this is for full-frame SLR. Okay, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and then when you mount it on there, I mean, you've got just a nice little package, nice little wide-angle lens. Uh, this camera is just, it's a gorgeous camera. I mean, it's its beautifully engineered. All the lenses, same thing. Great glass in these uh, in these Olympus OM lenses. But, yeah, so what what, lens, what Olympus set out to do with this uh, the OM series, like I said earlier, they're kind of giving you something, uh, a nice alternative to, to a rangefinder system because you have the compactness of a rangefinder. This is... This camera is about the size of a Leica uh, M series. It may, it may be actually a little less wide uh, than the Leica. Um, it is light. It's got a huge viewfinder, and it's got one of the smoothest mirror actions. That's another thing that they that another step that Olympus took to make it more like a rangefinder, because obviously rangefinders are a lot quieter than uh, SLRs. So if you listen to the uh, let's. Let's use a 1 1,000th and listen to the shutter uh, action. Very well dampened. This isn't too far off of my, uh, I don't know, my D500 or D810. It's, it's you know, in terms of, of mirror slap. Uh, they had this whole system that uh, Olympus put into these, uh, and I don't know if you can actually see it or not, but there's, there's some little shock absorbers under the mirror or somewhere in the mirror uh, assembly that that lessens the shock in you know in your mirrors it, it, it dampens the mirror slap which is another uh, you know great step that Olympus took so you've got a fairly for SLR quiet shutter compact size um, and you've got minimal mirror slap and, and I will tell you that this is the the mirror slap on this is is right in line with the modern camera I mean, we're in 2018 and this Olympus is is as quiet as anything that uh, any DSLR that Nikon or Canon is making and again the viewfinder is huge um, uh, and, and just really easy to focus with the uh, just to go over the body a little bit more with you um, this camera has a bulb lockout meaning that once you once you rotate the shutter speed ring down to uh, to one second, it won't let you go into bulb. There's a little button down here. That's your release that'll let the ring rotate all the way down to to bulb. Okay, so if you get one of these, don't think there's something wrong with it. It's just uh, this little bulb lockout. Uh, another little thing that I'll mention: this is where your film released when you're ready to rewind your film back into the canister this is where the release is yeah. and you just rotate it over and you see and now now you're ready to start rewinding your film and it, it's I don't think it's a it's a um, coincidence that Olympus placed a, the film rewind lever lever right here um, I'm sure they did it just to kind of remind you that they're in they're trying to compete with the rangefinder uh, form factor because um, this is where Leica puts their film rewind lever as well I don't think that's a coincidence, and I think it's a, a neat little, uh, neat little fact about this camera. On the bottom plate, this is uh, the opening, and I, I had a motor drive attached to it. The motor drives on these cameras were were ridiculous. I mean, I think they were three frames per second, made a bunch of noise, and that's pretty much pretty typical of all the cameras, not just Olympus. Um, I don't know how relevant they are nowadays, but um, this is a 
the, the top plate is removed here for the for the mirror or for the motor drive. Um, tripod socket right in the middle where it should be. Battery and this are electrical contacts for the power wider motor drive. Now these were system cameras, okay? Uh, and you know Olympus took Nikon head on. I mean they offered tons of lenses. I mean we're talking extreme telephoto lenses. I think they capped out at four or six hundred. Um, they had uh, bellows uh, systems for for microscopic work almost. Um, obviously a nice wide angle on here, portrait lenses, I mean you name it, uh, the Olympus system of lenses was huge. And the accessories, um, they even had like a ridiculous bulk film back. I think it took 360 photos or something like that that had these big spools that come out on either side. And um, the uh, the uh, back plate, they had data data backs and everything. And you can see the electrical contact here for the, if you had a data back installed on this one. Uh, the, these uh, are removable, you know, so you can... Uh, Put other other backs on there different type whether it be your bulk film back whether it be your data back or I'm sure they had other other backs that, that you could uh, put in there and looking at the back of it here here's your your uh, battery check light forward let's go ahead and load up some some film um, nothing out of the ordinary here you just you know you put your film in pull it across you're making sure that this is pulled up all the way put your film in Push it down now, pull it across, and the take-up spool did have teeth in it, so that makes it a lot easier to load. Uh, let's see, yeah, and it pretty much catches, you know, the first time right away. And yep, and then you're ready to close and, and start winding. And, and like all, you know, SLRs and film cameras, make sure that this is moving as you're winding the film. To, to get to your first frame okay um, yeah nice camera it, the exposure meter I'll, I'll talk about that for a little bit the uh, Olympus had TTL metering which they also incorporated into their flash uh, uh, system flashes and there were several system flashes there's it was a pretty smart system actually they um they were TTL and, and I mean Olympus took TTL to a new level when they came out with their flashes They had uh, one unit that would sit on top here, but the same unit could actually be attached to a handle that would be on the side. And uh, so so it, it the handle had batteries and it, it made it a much more powerful flash. So you had a compact flash option, and if you really wanted like a high powered flash for different kinds of work, or you know, a longer battery life, then you could attach the handle and, and go from there. It was a very well thought out system that and pretty much any professional could use. The only thing that, that these things never had was autofocusing. I don't think they ever came out with an OM, or not from the original series. But yeah, it's a it's a really nice camera. Highly recommend. Go, just go out and get one if you're interested. They don't cost that much. Uh, you can get a nice clean one on eBay for well under a hundred bucks. It's in the 60s usually, uh, and it's just a lot of camera for that little bit of money. I think you'll enjoy this if you like uh, SLRs like the Nikon F3 or the Canon AE1. This camera is, is smoother than all of them, smoother, quieter, more compact, the lenses are just as good, and it's just a really fun camera to use. Thanks guys.